Hello and welcome to Rando Tech Info and today we're revisiting an old issue and trying to answer what should be a simple question. Do refresh rates on smartphones really matter? Not that long ago, smartphone refresh rates only came in one flavor, 60 Hertz. But over the last couple of years, Android OEMs have really tried to push refresh rates as a selling point for their devices. This is most likely because it is a major advantage these devices have over the iPhone. At least that's what the manufacturers want you to think. But is it really? Over a year ago, my assistant Thomas and I ran some experiments to see if either one of us could tell the difference between 60 hertz and 90 hertz refresh rates. And I will include a link to that video down in the description if you want to see it in its entirety. But the short version is he could tell the difference and I couldn't. Is this because my eyeballs are 25 years older than his? Or is this because the difference between 60 hertz and 90 hertz simply isn't great enough for some people to be able to tell the difference. And if that is indeed the case, is the jump from 60 hertz to 120 hertz now going to be enough for me to tell the difference? That is what we are going to find out. But before we do, if it's not too much trouble, a sub to the channel would be most appreciated. Well, that was very polite. Now, just so you know how these tests are going to be run, I will not be looking at two phones side by side and seeing if I can tell the difference between the refresh rates of the phones. That's too easy and quite frankly, it doesn't really answer the question of how important refresh rates are if you can only tell the difference when you're looking at them both side by side. I mean, seriously, how often do you use two phones side by side? I think a much more useful test is just to use one phone, have that refresh rate randomly changed each time it's given to me between 60 and 120 hertz and seeing if I can tell the difference in the refresh rate simply by looking at the phone. So for the phone, we'll be using my Galaxy S21 Ultra. For the apps, we're going to be using Gmail. We're going to be using Altos Odyssey, which are the same two apps we used last time we did this test. And this time we're also going to be throwing in Temple Run 2. All three use 120 hertz refresh rates, so this should be a good test. So my assistant Thomas, who will be joining us here shortly, is going to test me 10 times with each app. He will randomly choose between 60 and 120 hertz each time he hands me the phone. I will look at it and I will see if I can tell the difference. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's go ahead and call in Thomas. Say hello, Thomas. Hello, Thomas. So are we ready to do this? I think so. All right, let's do it. I feel like I might have it this time. I think I think I think I could tell the difference. This is exciting. I'm I'm moving into the modern era with my eyesight. Maybe. Let's see my eyes. I think I'm going cross-eyed here. Let's say 120. I'm less certain about that though. I feel like seriously. I feel like I'm I'm. Losing it. My eyes are losing focus. All right, we've done the okay. 10 for Gmail. So how did I do? You got all 10 right. I got all 10 right, baby. So I all. can tell the difference. I can you tell can. the difference between 120 hertz and 60 hertz. Now remember, with 90 hertz, I, I got it totally messed up. Like I think I got five last yeah. time, a five out of 10. That's You can just randomly guess and get five out of 10 statistically. So could not tell, but with 120, it is smoother, and I felt like some of those times I could tell really quick. Okay, let's try the games. All right. All right. Strangely enough, I feel like this is harder than just with scrolling with Gmail. It's a little harder to tell, I feel like. Is that it? That is it. How'd I do? Six right, four wrong. Okay. That time. So, that not not as good that time. I think sometimes I thought it was easier to tell than others. I think part of the problem was like the backgrounds changed on the game, and I think with darker backgrounds it was a little harder to tell because mm -hmm. like it goes from day to night in mm -hmm. the game. So I think that was part mm -hmm. of the issue. Sometimes I felt like I could tell, and other times mm -hmm. I was kind of just guessing. I, I was uh, kind of mean and did do the same thing three times in a row. It okay. Was a stretch. So. Yeah, that's all right. It's it's supposed to be random. So. All right, now we're going to do Temple Run 2. And that is the end. Okay, so how did I do on that one? Four right and six wrong, unfortunately. Oof, oof. So definitely couldn't tell the difference on that one. Okay, so it's interesting. You'd think it'd be easier with games mm -hmm. to tell the difference, but that's not the case. Um, the scrolling was actually much easier than 
with the games. So, mm. hmm, not what I expected, but I think we definitely got some definitive results. I would agree. Okay. You can go, Thomas. Thank you. Oh, my God. Not again. Turn on the lights. So what did we learn here today? Well, we learned that these middle-aged eyeballs can actually tell the difference between lower and higher refresh rates in specific situations. Scrolling was definitely smoother on 120 hertz. It was interesting that I had such a hard time with those two particular games on 120 hertz. It might be easier with some other games to tell, but for those, for these eyeballs, I just really couldn't tell the difference. So the question I have now for someone like me, if I can only tell the difference when I'm scrolling around on my phone or through apps, is it really worth it for me to keep my phone on the adaptive 120 hertz refresh rate? Would I not be better off to just put it on 60 hertz and save a little battery? I think that is probably what I will do moving forward because quite frankly, I don't really care how smoothly I scroll through Gmail or my Google Keeps or across my home screen. But that's just me. Maybe you do care how smooth your phone feels in day-to-day -day use. Or if you're a gamer, maybe you do have games where you can tell the difference in the refresh rate. Don't let me tell you what you can see and what you can't and what's important to you and what isn't. But before you go out and spend a lot of extra money on a phone just because it has a higher adaptive refresh rate or a higher refresh rate, I think you need to ask yourself how much it matters whether you need to replace the phone you have or not, if it doesn't have a high refresh rate, and if it's worth the money and extra battery consumption. Well, that just about wraps things up for today. If you have a higher refresh rate phone, please let us know down in the comments if you think it does make a difference in the day-to-day -day use of that phone. And specifically, if you're a gamer, let us know what games you play where you think the higher refresh rate does make for a better gaming experience. As always, I hope you found this very useful. Thanks for watching. And until next time, this is Rando Tech Info, signing out.